and welcome to Art with Anna. Um, today we have the pleasure of learning and talking about artist Sergeant Johnson. And um, he is a sculptor, painter, um, artist of many kinds. And he is known as being an artist during the Harlem Renaissance. So we will also talk a little bit about that. But first, let's grab our supplies and we'll get started. We'll need three sheets of white paper, some neutral colored crayons like black, brown, tans, whites, grays, those colors, scissors, pencil, and glue. All right, so Sergeant Johnson is the artist we're focusing on today. And again, he is known for a lot of different types of art. I would say he's probably most prominently known for his sculpture though. Um, he led a life um, mostly in the north, so he grew up in, he was born in Boston, grew up mostly in Washington DC with his aunt and uncle after both of his parents passed away. Um, and it's kind of unknown how he started doing artwork, however his aunt was actually a prominent artist in Washington DC. Um, he kind of has a reputation for being the first African American artist to be actually credited with kind of acclaim in the state of California. So he eventually moves to California. Um, a lot of his artwork does have the theme of trying to highlight the beauty of African Americans. Um, and he talks about specifically highlighting their hair and their lips as something seen as beautiful because at the time it wasn't seen that way. Um, but later in his life, he started exploring different themes and a lot of his artwork is also quite inspired by Mexican art, which is probably um, a result of living in California and having a lot of access to Mexico where he traveled often and then just many Mexican people. So that's a little bit about him. Um, he is credited as being a part of the Harlem Renaissance. which might be a little confusing since he didn't spend much time in New York. Um, if you don't know, Harlem is a town, or a, not a, a town, but a, a community in New York. And um, the Harlem Renaissance was a time in the 20s and 30s where black artists um, of all different kinds, musicians, writers, poets, um, kind of all congregated and started to get a lot of attention from mainstream and white media um, and started to get recognized as legitimate artists. And um, this was a big part because of something called the Great Mi Migration North where a bunch of African Americans started coming north due to segregation Jim Crow laws in the South. Um, but also because of World War I, there had been um, less immigrants coming from Europe. So there was a need for more um, labor workers in the North. So those two kind of things combined made a perfect opportunity for black people to move north. And when that happened, there were sections of um, towns and areas where it was a lot of African-American people and they were able to be extremely successful and build a name for themselves more than just um, what they were known for, which was uneducated farmers. So really cool time. Um, he's recognized for being a part of that movement because one of his most prominent shows um, and first big events was in um, New York during that time. So we are gonna take a look at some of his relief sculptures and some of his masks that he was known for making. And we're gonna kind of combine those two ideas and make a piece of artwork ourselves. All right, so let's get out one of our white sheets of paper. And we are gonna fold it in half. And we are gonna cut out kind of a half oval shape. This is gonna be our first step. All right, so I've got my half oval. If I open it up, got a full oval, um, but while it's folded in half, I am going to make a line about a quarter inch in from the edge. 
I'm gonna draw it and then show you guys. It does not have to be perfect by any means. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but all the way around um, on one side and the other side. So both sides have this um, line against about a quarter inch around the entire oh, entirety of both sides. Then every few inches, I'm going to make a mark out like that. All the way around also. So you should have four or five marks probably on each side that come out like that. And we're gonna cut these, um, we're gonna cut right here on these lines and we're gonna make a little tab all the way around because this is gonna become a three-dimensional mask. So let's take a look at um, some of Sergeant Johnson's masks together. Pull them up. So on his masks, um, they are kind of looking a bit traditional, either traditionally African or Mexican. He kind of took um, inspiration from both. And both he's using um, the mask as kind of a, a way to really show off African beauty. Um, and I think that's really important in his art and important to look at today. Um, but he's also known for something called a relief sculpture. Um, he ended up doing one really big one at this high school and then a few smaller ones at this college. So I'll show you the big high school one here. And then these are a few from a college. So a relief sculpture is when you are kind of carving a shape out of something else. Um, sometimes they're made out of plaster, um, they can be made out of ceramics, but you're kind of taking a block and then you're carving around the block to leave the three-dimensional shape that you want. Um, we won't be doing that today, although I think that would be something that would be interesting to do in the future. But we're going to kind of take both of these um, artworks and kind of combine them together. So we are each going to make a three-dimensional mask. Um, and then if we put them all together, then you'll have kind of a wall of these three-dimensional masks. So it'll be a little bit like both of his artworks. All right, so we have our kind of our foundation of our mask here. And we are going to just cut on these marks right until that line. That's it. So right on the mark until that line. Right there, just like that. So now we have these tabs that we're gonna just fold in on themselves. We're gonna fold them all the same direction. You know, I think we're also gonna have to do one little snip at each of the spots where the mask is folded in half. All right, so you should have a bunch of little tabs that go around your sheet of paper that look like this. We are gonna put glue on those tabs and we are going to glue our mask eventually so it's like this. But first we need to decorate it while it's, while it's flat. All right, so this is the foundation of our mask. Um, what we need to add are just the different features of it, different um, facial features. So there's a few things that we can do. Um, you can either cut your features out from this mask or take a second sheet of white paper and kind of draw and cut out 
the facial features that you want to put on top of the mask. So I'll do a little bit of both. Um, I think I am going to use the center as a guide to cut out a little bit of a nose. Like that. Um, but I think I'll also put a piece on there and I'm gonna cut out some eyes and a mouth. So because um, the relief sculptures are made in kind of a stone and um, the masks are also typically made of wood or stone, I wanted to use all natural colors to work with today. Um, so we'll be making our eyes and our nose out of those colors. So I'm gonna start with, since I've already done a little bit of my nose, I am going to make a triangle up like this for my nose. You can make your facial features look literally any way that you would like. So there, I've got what I'm gonna cut out to be my nose. So I'm also gonna need some eyes. Um, so I'm gonna cut out some kind of pointed oval shapes. I think I'm gonna give them some eyelids. And color those in as I desire. All right, so I've got a nose and some eyes. The other part I want to add is obviously gonna be a mouth. So I'm going to add a mouth. Now, if you wanted, you could add a mustache. Um, you could add some hair around. You can add anything you want. So just take some time to play around with different facial features that you want to add to your mask. I'm going to cut mine out and glue them on. So during the Harlem Renaissance, that's when jazz really um, took off and specifically jazz piano. Previously to the Harlem Renaissance, piano hadn't really been a part of jazz at all. It would have been mostly just brass instruments. So that was a time when that really took off. Um, and also a time when white artists started using more African beats in their music because um, they were starting to recognize it as something that was good and not, um, not something that was just for people who were uneducated as they thought of black people at the time. I'm going to add my facial features. I'm going to choose to give my mask some cheekbones. I'm 
And I'm also going to choose to just shade half of it. It's just personal preference. Um, in the relief sculptures, a lot of the figures had, were only um, showing half their heads. They're kind of um, side views of the subjects. So I'm going to shade half of my sculpture to kind of represent a little bit of that. All right, so this is my mask. Now the next step is to take our last sheet of paper. We're gonna stick glue on all of these tabs and we're gonna try to you know, fold this a little bit better once I've glued everything down. Make it so that our mask is somewhat three-dimensional by gluing these tabs down and um, gluing the mask closer kind of more folded than, um, than just flat. We want it to stick out a little bit. We want it to be three-dimensional since our artist was a three-dimensional artist primarily. be perfect. Theoretically this will work, but <laughs> it might not be perfect. We're kind of doing this for the first time together. I think mine needs to be a little bit lower. Alright, and then these tabs. So Sergeant Johnson did end up um, dying at the age of 76, so he lived a pretty long life. Um, he did have a daughter. He was married once, um, and they, he did separate from his wife, but stayed in good terms with her until she passed away. Um, so that's just a brief overview of his life. There actually isn't um, too much available out there about him. Um, but his artwork has kind of left a legacy um, for him to be remembered by. So here I have my three-dimensional mask. Um, as you can see, it kind of sticks out and is not perfectly flat. It's a little reminiscent of kind of two different types of sculpture that he did, um, carvings, but then also relief sculptures. All right, so your artwork should look a little bit like this. Um, but again, be a little personalized however you wanted to make your masks and make um, the, kind of the parts on your mask look. So I'm excited to see what you guys made. Um, I think these, this turned out pretty cool. I hope that you learned a little bit about our artist today and I will see you guys again next week. All right, have a good day, bye.